Hey guys, Riley Spanish here, and this is part six of my playthrough of Crystal Legacy, the Pokemon Crystal ROM hack made by YouTuber Smith Plays Pokemon. Um, last episode, I battled Chuck. My screen is a little wonky here. Sorry about that. But, yeah, last episode, battled Chuck, and... Um, got the secret potion, all that, battled you seen, all the stuff that you do on the island there. And now I am bringing Amphi's medicine to the top of the lighthouse. I already cleared out all the trainers in here. So the typical go from the end of one gym leader section to the battle with the next one, finish that battle and then end an episode. That kind of format will probably not be the way this one goes because uh, you fight Jasmine pretty much right away after this. So I'm going to do that and probably do all the Lake of Rage stuff. And depending on how long that all takes, basically, I might go um, through the rocket section there. Or I might do the price episode by starting with the rocket underground thing under the, the shop in um is that mahogany or blackthorn I, I can't remember what the town name is where lake of rage is i think it's blackthorn who am i leading with here definitely a safe bet to lead with heracross but i kind of want to try to lead with quilava because it is a little under leveled right now so maybe if she has like some magnemites or something to start Skarmory. Yeah, that did not last long. What is a good counter to... I guess, Lantern. Got swaggered, but that is fine. Wish I would have kept Quilava for this. I'll try to adjust the screen, because it's not showing the very top right now, which is not ideal. Ooh. Scissor came in clutch right there. Steelix, okay. Steelix is faster. Don't love that. And I think that is going to be uh, an L for sure. Because there's no way that... Uh, yeah, unless I flinched him all the way down, there was no way that was working out. I'm going to buy some potions just before all of my money is gone from whiting out. Um, maybe a few great balls too. I don't know how many I have, but buy ten of those. Buy a few potions because I'm not use I'm I'm not planning to use them in battle going forward. I think I have a few times. Um, but I think I'm going to stay away from that and then just try to, like, just do them as well as I can. And go through a couple of L's and try to learn from whatever the previous strategy was. Okay, I need to adjust this just a tad. So that the top is visible. That's better. I don't know what happened between me recording the last episode I was doing and this, but somehow the top got cut off a little bit. But I think that leading with Lantern is going to be better. I am under leveled here, which I'm glad that the levels do scale better. So it's not just Chuck, Jasmine, Price, all the same level pretty much, but um, Definitely not quite as prepared as I would have liked to be. Okay. I actually outsped that time, so I guess I'm speed tied with the Steelix. I was able to take out the Steelix, which was definitely the biggest threat. And can I get it with one flame wheel? Oh, well, that. That is not great.
it's just trying to wear me down with spikes, which is actually a really cool strategy for the AI to be able to do. Didn't expect something like that, and Scissor should be a one-shot. That was much easier that time, just leading with Lantern on the Skarmory. I think whether or not I got the Paralysis off, it still would have gone just as well, but the spikes and switching around... Um, as far as I know, the AI was not changed. They were just given better moves, more competitive movesets, and uh, it's cool to see them use a strategy like that. Um, you know, like, uh, when I play through the Kaizo games, they do a lot of toxic stall strats with, like, the computer AI, which, as far as I know, is not changed. Um, but yeah, they'll do, like, toxic, toxic protect and stuff like that, which is certainly obnoxious, but, um, I can give a talk to the guy in here first. It's certainly obnoxious, but it's still really cool to see the games being a little smarter than they're known to be. I don't know if I have enough berries to uh, fully heal it, but I have no berries. It's quite healthy, but not completely healthy. And I think this is a mint berry tree. Yeah. So that doesn't help the mill tank. But yeah, that was uh, Jasmine. Pretty quick into the episode so like I said usually they've been ending on the gym leader but with them being so close it doesn't really make sense to do it that way um, I do still want to get something that can use fly but I'm not quite sure what that's going to be yet once I do I'll probably go on a little adventure you know going back to towns that I can surf in and stuff to get items there is the next scripted encounter with Suicune. And I think those are all just Apricorns, I believe, which I'm not really interested in. I will take that item, though. I do want to explore this cave a little bit, Mount Mortar. Maybe pick up a few items. But depending on what kind of level I'm at after doing the rocket hideout, I might do another small session of off-screen grinding just to get everything to an adequate level for price. Because I assume he is going to have Pokemon in like the level 40 to 42 range if I had to guess. Just because there's only um, one more Johto gym leader after him, and I'm guessing she is going to have somewhere between like level 45 and 50 Pokemon, and she is probably going to be pretty tough. Claire is definitely not easy with the signature Kingdra, and um, I'm looking forward to the challenge of that for sure. For now, I'll just do a little bit of exploring. So that should be everything from this middle section. I don't know if I can do anything else in this room of the cave. I know that I am going to use Repel now, though, because I don't think there's anything I especially want to run into here. We'll use the Super Repel, since I only have one of that to clean up the bag a little bit. Yeah, just a waterfall here, so we'll go in through the left entrance. I did come in here briefly um, previously to train up a little bit for the Morty fight, but that is the only time I've been in here so far. A 
This cave is a... Uh, it's a pretty cool, like, dungeon for its time, for sure. It's definitely one you could potentially get a little bit lost in. Ultra Ball. Nugget cannot get up there right now. Let's fight this guy. Slowpoke, which is a perfect thing for a lantern leading. Nothing else that way. Escape rope. Okay, so I've already covered that direction. And that was nothing. Alright, I don't know that I can progress much down this path then. Let's try to go up and around. The Karate King. He's not usually here, is he? He's normally in, uh cave by the final gym, but I have no room for the Tyrogue. I swear that is not where he typically is. I very well could be wrong, but I really don't think I am in this particular case. I am almost certain that he is in the other side of Dark Cave, typically. I'm going to have to seriously train Quilava, though, because it just hasn't been able to... Other than a couple of Jasmine's Pokemon, he has not been able to participate much. Hyper Potion. And uh, once it evolves to Quilava, I think it will be a little more useful. And... That is all of the cave that I can explore without waterfall, I believe. Another Nido King. One of my favorite things about old Pokemon games is that Sturdy doesn't exist. It's a cool ability if you're the one using it, but it is such a pain to battle stuff with Sturdy. And here's the shady store with the rocket base underneath. I think we'll go do the Lake of Rage. Let's see if I can lead with Quilava a little bit. I guess, actually, I spoke too soon. Other than Heracross being one level above, my team is pretty much completely evenly leveled, and I'm, I'm really weird and, like, particular about trying to keep them as even as possible throughout the playthrough. It really doesn't matter too much, I mean, at, in the late game at least, but I'm just so picky about that for some reason. Two confusions in a row. Did I freeze up? Oh, there we go. Game came back. That's just kind of part of playing a patched game, I think. You know, sometimes it'll glitch out on you just a little bit, especially when I'm speeding it up as I go, too. Oh, come on. That was pretty ideal uh, amount of sleep turns there. Heracross would be much better for this. And of course, Quilava would be much better for this. Get this item, and then 
hop back down, heal up, go back up there. There's not an incredibly large amount of uh, trainers in the Lake of Rage area, but there's a couple of like split paths you can take to get some items and stuff. I wonder if there's wild Venomoth. That would probably be decent XP. Girafferig. That is a Pokemon I can say I have never used in any playthrough of anything, to be honest. Not that I don't like it, it just hasn't really happened. I'm gonna switch into Shuckle. just because I want to sacrifice it. I was just afraid of switching into an Earthquake and having Lantern get knocked out. Charmeleon, that's easy. It has already tried to learn Confuse Ray earlier. Still don't want it. Okay. Yeah, Lantern is becoming a very important team member already. Water and electric coverage is just too good. The Gyarados are angry. Very angry. There are some trainers that show up that are battleable later um, after you've done the uh, Team Rocket stuff. Like, if you come back, a couple more trainers show up that you can battle. It's kind of like in Ruby and Sapphire. When you're at the top of the mountain and you get, like, the meteorite from the pedestal and you fight the team leader up top there, um, if you leave and then come back after you've cleared them all out, there's these trainers that weren't there before that you can fight. But they're easy to miss because you have to basically finish the area and come back after you've already done what you're supposed to do there. And there's not a ton of reasons to go back to Lake of Rage once you've um, caught or defeated the Red Gyarados. That's pretty much what there is there. Rare candy, nice. Sure, those will be quite useful at the end of the playthrough. Usually, uh, or not usually, but my plan is to um, just save them for right before I battle Red. I don't know what his team is going to look like. That might be the only time that I look up documentation before going into him. Because what I don't want to happen is me going all the way through Mount Silver, getting up to Red, and then um, needing some serious grinding when I've already gotten myself all the way there. And then I'll, you know, probably find myself just trying to cheese the battle somehow instead of getting to an appropriate level to battle him. So I'd rather go in there um, a little more prepared to begin with, at least within like five levels of his team. But even in vanilla, I mean, his team is like level 80 something, which is an insane jump from everybody you fought previous to him. Um, I'm certainly not the first person to talk about that, but yeah, it is just a very bizarre spike in levels. Alright, here is the Red Gyarados. I'm afraid to attack it with um, Lantern because I feel that if I hit it with a spark, I don't know if one is enough to take it out, but a crit is definitely enough to take it out. So I think I might just... Uh, strength was even pushing it there. I know it resists Rock Smash, but I also get Stab on that, so I might just start throwing balls now. and just hoping to get lucky and catch it. Because I really don't want to defeat it on accident. Maybe flail? I can at least hit it with a water gun or two. Oh, it's confused now. I need... I need it to not 
knock itself out. Ultra Ball, no speed up, just catch it. Didn't even shake. Okay, it broke out of confusion, so... Hopefully it doesn't use Thrash again. Got him. Got the red scale. I am curious to see what Mr. Pokemon gives you in exchange for that, since you get the EXP share at the very beginning of the game. It's possible that you just get nothing and the event has been removed, but I'm not sure. Who is this? I don't know if that guy is usually there in the vanilla version. I did hear that there was like a slight difference maybe to the Rocket storyline. Yeah, they both took off and... I think that that guy is added in. It might be Looker, perhaps. Definitely looked like a detective kind of outfit he was wearing. I'm not sure though. It would be cool if it was Looker. Definitely kind of a fan favorite amongst the games. So instead of Lance just murdering somebody with his Charizard, it's that guy with his Nidoqueen. Alright. But I think... that I will end this episode here, and then the next episode will be basically uh, getting through the rocket hideout and then going after Price. So thank you very much for watching, please consider subscribing, and stay tuned for part 7.